It's time for Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Werpen. Uh, Judy Werpen, of course, uh, joins us on a Thursday morning. She is co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, uh, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, uh, the author of Simon Loses His Tummy, and also her latest book before, Her Voice Was Still. And we say good morning, Dr. Werpen. Good morning to both of you, and I'm so happy that spring is finally blossoming out, and you have the nice warm weather that everyone's been waiting for since probably November. Probably, uh, the, the light. Just, I, I, I was going to talk today, to, today, talk to you today about something that I'm sure Marshall is very familiar with, uh, and that is how do you get yourself to exercise when you are feeling tired? And, you know, it, there seems to be this, we all fall into this sort of common assumption that if I'm tired, I deserve to rest. My body feels like it really can't move. You know, I, I finish a day of work. My, my legs and arms are tired. My head feels like it's stuffed with wool. I can barely talk because, you know, I'm just sort of dealing with the aftermath of the stresses of, of the workplace and maybe even a long commute home. The last thing I want is somebody saying to me, because I try to lose, I have to lose weight, or because my doctor thinks that I'm not fit enough, that as soon as I get home, I should, instead of sort of lying on the couch and putting on the, the guide for the remote to see what's on television, I should put on my, my running shoes, uh, you know, a sweatshirt if it's cold, if it's chilly outside, or a T-shirt, go outside and go for a long walk, or maybe a bike ride, or perhaps if there's a... Uh, some kind of exercise program in my you know, high school or in my, my community center when things were available, you know, go out and, and exercise. Because what these doctors and, and other health experts are telling me is you will feel more energetic. How do you convince yourself that that's really going to uh, you know, come to pass? And, and the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is that I um, had a long discussion with somebody who uh, works in m- my building as a, uh, a health aide to somebody who has a, a severe neurological problem and he needs a great deal of health in just carrying out, you know, the activities of daily life, as they call it. Uh, there is uh, a male, he's a male uh, patient, and there's a male health worker who comes in and does all this sort of heavy lifting, as it were, because the person in question can't really move very well. But this woman is really um, somebody who takes care of everything, you know, from literally paying his bills to you know, making sure that, you know, there's supper on the table and that the laundry is done. And, uh, and she told me that she has to lose weight. Uh, she knows she doesn't overeat. Um, she's very much aware of her diet, but she simply can't lose weight. And she said to me, I know it's because I don't do any kind of exercise. And, I, you know, I just assumed that her job would give her enough physical activity so that would be, you know, an area that she wouldn't have to worry about. But, no, she's on her feet, but she's not really doing anything that one would consider aerobic exercise where her heart rate goes up, she's spinning to sweat, she sort of burning off calories and putting on muscle. And so, uh, you know, we talked, and uh, she has a relatively long commute home. She doesn't get home until sometimes 7.30 or 8. But, you know, these days when the sun doesn't go down, um, you know, until maybe 7.30 or so, uh, you know, and she, I said to her, why can't you walk when you get home? Um, because you live in a place where it's possible to walk. And she said, oh, yes, I live in a really lovely neighborhood. Uh, there's, very, there's very little traffic. There are sidewalks. Um, there are people, I see people walking all the time. But she said, I just never have done it because I'm too tired. So <laughs> our conversation continued. I, I said, you know, too bad you don't have a dog because if you had a dog, you'd have to go home and walk the dog. Oh, she said, I have a dog. I have two dogs. And I have a backyard. They have never been walked. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. She, she, she said, you know, I send them out to the backyard. They do their stuff, and they come back inside. Or if they want to play around, that's okay because there's a, a gate but uh, and a fence. But you know, I never walk them. <laughs> and, I, it, and we both sort of laughed. She said, my dogs are fat. <laughs> and she have to lose weight also. And, and it occurred to me, how can this be that, that somebody um, is so far from doing exercise that, you know, she or he doesn't even consider walking the dog something that would be the sort of standard, a part of your, 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 your daily activity for the day. But, but, but I understand that you know, for her, how do I get her? to understand that if she were to take the dogs for a walk and she finally agreed to do so, 
that she would feel more energetic. I mean, there are studies that show this over and over again, and studies that show if you have people with workplace stress and you put them through an exercise program with even very light exercise, that their, their stress goes away, they feel more energetic, their fatigue is diminished, they just feel that they can even handle their work and whatever they have to do when they come home so much better. I mean, there, there are studies that you can just look on the Internet that verify this over and over again. But it is so hard to convince somebody, why would one want to believe a study, if your body is saying to you, well, it may be true for somebody else, but I know when I get home, all I can really do is lie down. And I think the only way to really do this is to say, okay, just try it for a week. You know, do 10 minutes a day. Just walk around your house if you have a home. You know, go and, and um, you know, if you have a dog, take the dog down to the corner and back again. Or, you know, you find a time when you see other people walking who you know from your neighborhood and just say, you know, could I walk with you for five minutes? Or could we, we meet up someplace and just go for a walk around the block? I mean, the only way to start is really to start. And then see, do you feel more tired? Or when you come back home, do you feel refreshed? Is it possible that when you're exercising, you're no longer thinking about the problems that have consumed you during the day, mostly from work, for example, or what's confronting you when you get home, but that you really um, can deal with them better? I mean, I had a friend who had a very difficult uh, job, work, and home situation. She was sort of the primary caretaker. She had a very long job. And when she got home from work, she knew she would have all these things to deal with. And she said, but I used to go running, and people used my, uh, you know, a, a friend used to say to me, why do you run? And I said to her, because for a while I'm running away from my problems. All I have to do is just concentrate on my breathing. Is there a, a hill up ahead? You know, can I go a little faster? Is it going a little slower? Is there a crack of the sidewalk that I better avoid so I don't fall down and sprain my ankle? But I can concentrate on my exercise, and it just absolutely clears my mind of all the things that have been bothering me during the day, and I can return from my run feeling that I can tackle the problems that await me at home. And so, we, and, our, and her story could be repeated in variations by many, many, many people. But again, it's very hard to convince somebody literally to take that first step. And that is probably why they say a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a the first single, thing. Yeah, single exactly. step. Um, and it's, but, it's, know, it's hard. It's, it, it is really hard because you, when you get into the habit of not, it is really difficult to get into the habit. Uh, there are many more reasons not to start than to start. Yes, and I and I think one of the problems is that people, you know, see, maybe see over may seem feel feel overwhelmed by what they are trying to accomplish because they see people who are already fit and they think to themselves, well. I can never be like that. Or they see people jogging in their neighborhood or biking, you know, in those spandex outfits and say, I'm certainly not going to look like that. And, and, and so they have an unrealistic expectation. But what they, you know, it's, it's like really changing anything. You're not going to be able to change it cold turkey, as it were. You, you just have to try a little bit. And look, nobody's putting a gun to your head. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, go say to some, you know, your doctor, whoever's suggesting that you exercise, look, I'm maybe one of those people who it's not going to work for. Fine. But at least try it. And then, and then you can make up your mind as to whether you want to pursue it on any level whatsoever. If you're just simply walking to the end of your driveway and back again, if that's what you want to do, fine. Or climbing some steps and down again. If that's what you, what you want to do, fine. You don't have to... You know, be a, uh, a contender for Miss America at the end of your exercise, or, or Miss Fitness America at the end of your exercise program. But you should do it because it really does work, and it's better than taking painkillers or uh, you know, or simply you know, being good to yourself by lying on a couch. It really does make you more energetic. I can give you an example how it works. I normally go home because I get up at three thirty in the morning, and I normally take a little nap when I get home for an hour or two. Right. Well, yesterday when I got home, um, my normal uh, dog walk wasn't there, and so uh, Georgia needed to be walked. Uh, and I was going to reinstall this piece of equipment that failed, but I said, I'll do it later after my nap. Well, I took Georgia out for not more than, I would say, a five- to seven-minute walk uh, to go to the bathroom around the outside of the house, came back inside, and proceeded to uh, 
not do my nap, and I installed this piece of equipment that I had to install. And before I knew it, it was four o'clock, and I was working on the afternoon news. And I didn't, and I, and I had, so I didn't, I didn't fall into the trap of going into the uh, into into my nap. Okay, perfect example, Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And and I I remember when I first started going back to doing exercise because for a while there were no health clubs and there were no real easy places to walk, especially in the winter time. But I remember coming back from you know the laboratory where I was doing you know, research and sometimes dealing with very unruly patients, etc., um, who didn't want to be part of her study at, at some point, and and just being unable to talk on the way home because I was so tired. And I would come home and put on my running clothes and and run again, not maybe for more than 20 minutes and I come back and I could face you know, getting the meals on the table you know doing the laundry doing all my stuff that I had to do when I got home and I just really felt that it was like a new day for me I had burst of energy and it works but again Marshall if you hadn't had to walk the dog could you have been convinced of it maybe not you're, pro- you're right. You're probably no, right. It would have been the regular schedule. This is very interesting. Thank you very much, Dr. Judy Wortman. Thank you. Wonderful talking to you. Bye-bye. Food for Mood. And you can hear Judy here on Robin Hood Radio every Thursday morning, uh, live, and then, of course, on demand, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Food for Mood with Judy Wortman.